I think he should have been prime minister, really. Wouldn't that have been great? Peter uh, listen, prime minister. I, I think Peter should make a, a a bid for. Well, there'll be another Tory leadership contest at some point soon, so perhaps I'm Peter can throw his hat in the ring. And just final question: How do you think Peter would fare in the cu- current government? Because do you think Peter was a bit more of a sort of one nation Tory, or do you think he would have got behind the kind of Suella Braverman kind of Tory party? Where do you think he'd be right now? How do you think he'd be playing it? I I think. I think probably in his heart, he's he's a one nation Tory. Uh, he's not a horrible person, I don't think. But I think he's a, he's also a desperate fence setter. So would have really. I don't think he'd have resigned. I think he'd have really tried to survive, you know, um, and sit on the fence. Yeah, sit at on any the fence. at any cost. Yes. Now, um, Roger, I can't have a conversation without you with you without citing my favourite ever TV show in the history of time. <laughs> the thick of it in which you played the greatest political character, Sir Peter Mannion. Do you miss Sir Peter? Was he a knight? I think I've just made him one. I think oh, it's... oh, you knighted me. I think just... No, I don't think he was a knight. You know, I can't remember now. I loved doing it. You see, that was something that was sort of between... Uh, that that was um, um, obviously longer than something like conversations from a long marriage, but nowhere near as involved for me as Endeavour, because I always seemed to be doing something in the theatre when we were filming. So it was sort of I was fitted in on Sundays and during the during the day before a show and stuff like that. But it was I, I, I've never worked quite like that before or since, because there was a certain amount of improvisation uh, in the looser way that it was um, filmed than most uh, television. You know, we'd all, we'd all sit down originally and do a, a, and do a read-through of a, of a very, very good, funny script. But um, then the writers would go away. Then we'd maybe, under Armando Iannucci's instruction, do a little bit of improvisation, extending certain situations. Then the writers would go away again. And then, you know, a week or so later, we'd start filming it. And there were always two cameras on the move rather than, you know, rather than doing the whole master shot and then coming in for close-ups and all that. So, as I say, it was a much looser way of filming than I than I uh, have been used to before or since. Uh, and it's, on certain takes, uh, Armando would encourage you to improvise and say, you know that bit when you're saying, uh, you know, all I can think of, of course, is uh, is Baroque swearing now, which I'm sure Times Radio <laughs> um, it, it, When you're doing that that bit there, could you extend it and see how far it will go? And so you do a take in which, you know, some conversation or situation would get would get extended and you go further with it and occasionally that would make it into into the finished um into the finished episode so it, it was a very different way and of course you know uh, um, they've gone on to make um succession which uh, i mean uh, another magnificent i think utterly Absol- magnificent. absolutely mag- magnificent i mean the the and, and as you say so many of the the writers were, were involved from from yeah. the thick of it i mean to me the thick of it is just still the absolute standout satire of our time i mean i was working in the i was basically terry when when oh, really? um, yeah i was like basically terry and, a, and i remember watching it and i literally was like having a kind of aneurysm watching because it, it was funny but it was too close to the bone and one of the things i've always wondered is like you capture the kind of frustration and ennui of of many a junior minister and and sort of you know frustrated um politician did you speak to any mps or or or, or politicians before you were kind of getting your head into into peter mannion no None whatsoever. No, <laughs> no. I mean, um, there were a few sort of models, and of course, there was so much on on television as well that you could just watch and access. But but really, but really, I sort of, I don't know. Really, I kind of used my own bafflement by technology, really, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 as a way of exploring Peter's, <laughs> and. Um, 
And also that sense that, uh, I mean, it's still around now, although we're in a different political moment now, I think, than when we were making the thick of it, that uh, politics had become about trying to trying to make announcements, trying to trying to get headlines, trying to get trying to get publicity, you know. Um, and uh, as you say, the frustration of junior ministers is is that it, yeah, you're not one of the big guys and you can't really you can't really kind of get the traction, get the attention that yeah. you so desperately seek. Um, I think he should have been prime minister, really. Wouldn't that have been great? Peter uh, listen, Prime Minister. I think Peter should make a, a a bid for. Well, there'll be another Tory leadership contest at some point soon, so perhaps I'm Peter I'm can I'm throw his hat in the ring. And just final question: How do you think Peter would fare in the cu current government? Because do you think Peter was a bit more of a sort of one nation Tory, or do you think he would have got behind the kind of Suella Braverman kind of Tory party? Where do you think he'd be right now? How do you think he'd be playing it? I I think. I think probably in his heart, he's he's a one nation Tory. Uh, he's not a horrible person, I don't think. But I think he's a he's also a desperate fence setter. So would have really. I don't think he'd have resigned. I think he'd have really tried to survive, you know, um, and sit on the fence. Yeah. At any, at any cost. Yes. And you are starring in what looks like a brilliant new play um, called Frank and Percy, and you're starring with Ian McKellen. Tell us about Frank and Percy. Oh, one of those questions, yes, where I just have to speak intelligently for a long time about Frank and Percy. <laughs> OK. Um, well, Frank I mean, and Percy you, I know the... you can do it. I know you can do it, oh, Roger. Can I, can I? Can <laughs> I? Um, Frank and Percy is the story of two older men um, who meet by chance uh, walking their dogs and, uh, and forming of their friendship and relationship. They're both of them lonely. Um, my character, Frank, uh, his wife died four years ago, so he's a widower. Uh, Ian's character, Percy... Um, uh, has a husband who he left many, many years ago, but um, still lives close. Who still lives close by? So they have very other few other people in their lives, and it's just really about how they form a friendship and in in love, actually, in a way, how, how it sort of uh, bears fruit into a kind of loving relationship and the difficulties of that as well, I suppose, because. Um, it, it, they have different views about various things. Um, you know, you can be quite set in your ways when you're <laughs> after after you've trodden the earth for uh, a number of decades. And um, so it's about the difficulty, I suppose, of, as well of maintaining a re relationship, but their need for it and their uh, and what becomes their love for each other and their how they sort of. I suppose, help each other get through life mm. and approach death, but not and, in a depressing way. <laughs> and, it, I mean, it's had it's had fantastic um, reviews. And as you say, you, you're both coming from, from different places because Ian McKellen, who plays Percy, has been this proudly gay man and, and yeah. you playing Frank. You're straight, you've been married, you're um, a, a, a widower. And as you say, you, you end up sort of, you know, having a love, a friendship love, and it sort of develops. I mean, how much do you think that's explored in the dramatic narrative? Because we have lots of kind of uh, love stories about younger people from different backgrounds falling in love. We don't really have that many stories about older people falling in love from different backgrounds. Yes, I, I, I think that's one of the very attractive things about it, that it's, that it's a, a, a very warm and essentially optimistic play about how you can find love at any stage in your life, really, and how you can find things within yourself that have either been buried for a long time um, or, or or you haven't been aware of were there. You know, so um, you're quite right. I mean, there, there aren't that many stories about older people falling in love, you know, but so 
um, I think it's I think it's uh, both original and also uh, and also as I say optimistic and hopeful on, on those terms. And um, a question that I have been dying to ask you is, yes. what was it like to snog Ian McKellen? <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's fine, isn't it? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I've not done it. I've not done it. No, no, no. Neither had I before, except you know, sort of greetings, hello, in a, 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 a hello greetings in a the theatrical manner. It, it, it's fine. I, I'm acting, so I'm deeply immersed in my character. You know, as you can imagine, at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and listen. Um... Obviously, this is a, a a love story and a friendship that centres around, you know, kind of two old gentlemen, but also their love of of dogs, because um, Percy has this Labrador called Bruno and, and your Frank has this spaniel called Toffee. Tell us about the dog, the canine element in, in this. Yes, I'm completely woefully ignorant of our dogs. I mean, Roger Allen is. Uh, Frank, of course, isn't. Um, but... Um, uh, I, I'm more of a kind of dog liker than a dog mm. lover, really. I think they're I think they're very nice, but uh, I don't require one in now, my are, life. Are there dogs but, on? Um, are there dogs on stage? There's dogs you? on stage. Oh wow! Uh, no, no, there aren't dogs on stage. Oh. No. no, there aren't. Um, we, you will see them and hear them, and they their presence will be summoned up by the extraordinary quality of our acting but there won't be actual <laughs> dogs on stage because the dogs on stage i fear would completely destroy any acting ability that either of us have <laughs> well it's that adage of uh, working with, with children um and uh, and animals um it's and look, you, you've had this, you know, very long and, and illustrious um, career. I recently interviewed you about your TV show, Endeavour. You've been doing lots of TV work. Of course, we know and love, and I'm obsessed with you as Peter Mannion from, from the thick of it. You will move on to that in a bit. How did you find uh, coming back to the, to, to the stage, having done lots of TV work? Well, I've, I, throughout all those years, I've I've always I've generally tried to do a play a year, so I, I haven't been kind of away from it. Although it has taken up much less of my life than than it did twenty years ago. Goodie with this one is that uh, I hadn't done a play since literally just before the pandemic, just before lockdown. I was doing another two hander. Um, Carol Churchill's play, A Number, at the bridge with uh, We had a very short run, and our run finished Saturday before lockdown was declared. And oh, wow. But since then. So I, I, was, I was apprehensive going back to it because that's the longest I've ever been without doing a play. But... Um, you know what can I say? It was fine. It was like it was like in a sense it was like riding a bike. You know, you just sort of think, oh yes, I remember, and you 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 have all that muscle memory, and it comes back. Mm. And and of course it was with Ian as well, who's a who's a very good friend of mine, and so that felt you know that that was and Sean Mathias, uh, the director. So we we'd all worked together, oh, uh, you know, a century or so ago, doing a, a, a pantomime. Uh, at the old Vic uh, together. So, you know, it, it, it was amongst friends, which was great. And how does being on stage compare to doing, you know, these big TV jobs? I mean, Endeavour was a, was a huge uh, TV, massive hit TV series, many, many uh, different r runs of that. What, what do you prefer doing, TV or, or, or these kind of plays? Oh, it's difficult. I used to always say uh, the theatre because I just like the 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 uh, the, the liveness of theatre and being in the room with the audience. And of course, I still do uh, like that. But you know, they all the, all forms of work have uh, for an actor have different qualities. That you know, and endeavour. I've never done anything over that length of time. Not that I signed up for that length of time. You know, I signed year by year. But I've never done the same character over uh, that kind of period how long was it sort of 10-ish years uh, and 
and so and I've never had uh, such a kind of deep and intimate relationship with another actor like Sean Evans, you know, and and I probably never will again. So that that's what I've loved about doing Endeavour. Um, uh, uh, but it's also nice to do very different things. I've always found, anyway, and uh, very uh, and things that are a lot shorter. I mean, the the the, the lovely um, radio series I do with Joanna Lumley, Conversations from a Long Marriage, a whole series of conversations from a long marriage takes three days of my life. You know, that's all it takes. So, and that's that's lovely and pleasurable to do in a totally different way, you know. <laughs> well, it's it's great that you've got, you know, this huge um, range. And of course, you you were the original Javert in, in Les Mis. Did you love doing like a big, full-on, full-fat musical like that? Well, yes, I did. I mean, I'd never done anything like that before. It's, um, uh, and it, it was packed. Every performance I seem to remember looking out at a at a full uh, at a completely full theatre when we transferred to the Palace Theatre from the Barbican. That's uh, I think fifteen hundred people. So I sort of thought, oh, this is what the West End is like. It's just <laughs> full, absolutely all the time. Um, and then I discovered it wasn't. You know. <laughs> but it, it was a, it, no, it was a wonderful experience doing something that was. Uh, as popular as that, although, you know, it, it's sometimes difficult to get rid of the tunes. <laughs> the earworms in your morning. head. Yeah. Forever yeah. haunting you. Um, well, look, Roger, um, what a pleasure speaking with you. It, it's always brilliant to catch up with you. And the play sounds absolutely um, wonderful. We'll definitely be coming uh, along to see it, Frank and, and Percy. Um, thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Bye. Oh.